Hello YouTube, this is Frugal. You will remember a while ago I did a video overview of my SciTech yoke setup. I'm actually a big fan of SciTech. I have a SciTech yoke, as you saw in that video, the a, uh, switch panel, two throttle quadrants. Underneath my desk here, I've actually got the SciTech rudder pedals as well. I'm about to upgrade those and get the combat pedals from SciTech. I also even have an X52, which I use for the longest time. Um, but after that video, a number of people wrote to me, or messaged me, nobody writes to anybody anymore, messaged me and said, what do you recommend for a kind of a mid-range, sort of late beginner mid-range joystick? And I don't really have a clue there, to be honest. And I thought about it and I actually reached out to SciTech and I said, what can you do? What, how can you help? What have you got? Because the problem we've got right now in simulation is there are not a lot of people making consumer level stuff. I mean, there are a lot of people making very, very high-end stuff and semi-high-end stuff, which tends to be very expensive as well, but no real... The, you don't have the breadth of choice that you used to have with joysticks. Everything these days is game pads and stuff like that. SciTech or Mad Cats are still producing joysticks and they're producing a lot of them. And they actually sent me two. One of them is this. Now, I'm not going to look at this today, but this is the Cyborg V1. This is their entry-level joystick. It's very cheap. It's about $20. It's a good entry-level price for somebody just beginning in simulation, which makes sense then that I cover this in a separate video. So I'm going to cover this in a video all about getting started with simulation. I'm going to talk you through FSX, X-Plane, and an entry-level joystick, what you need to look for and the features it needs to have. We'll look at that later. What we are going to cover today, though, is this beastie which is the Mad Cats Fly 5. This thing is mental. Now, the Mad Cats Fly 5 is actually part of the Cyborg range. As you can see somewhat from the design here, let me turn it around, it is very, very angular. Can you get a good shot of the back of the box here? It's very, very angular, very robotic, very um, futuristic, much like the rest of the Cyborg range. On the other channel, Frugal P, I actually reviewed the Cytec, sorry, the Mad Cats Cyborg uh, MMO mouse, one of the rat mice, which again is very, very angular and futuristic looking. The cool thing with this is it does absolutely everything you need and then some. It, it does a lot of stuff that I really wasn't expecting a joystick at this level to actually do. It has no less than two throttle quadrants on it, twisty grip for the rudders, proper joystick as you would expect. It has a hat switch for looking around, a ton of buttons and a ton of programmability. So without further ado, let me show you the actual joystick and I'll talk you through everything. Okay, so here's the joystick in its natural form when it comes out of the box. It's actually a little bit different to this in that the joystick is not attached to the base. There's a, uh, a bolt under here which you can tighten with your fingers to attach the stick itself to the base. But you can already see this looks nothing like the picture here. The reason why is actually the cyborg in the name. If we pull these two parts here, it transforms very Optimus Prime into the Cyborg Fly 5. Now these two arms extend either side and they give it some stability and stop it moving around. You can see here I can wiggle this quite a lot and I'm not putting a lot of pressure, downwards pressure on the stick, but it's not sliding. It's great. They're not um, suction cups on the bottom. They're just non-stick, non-slip sticky grips on the bottom which work really, really well. Now this is probably like the um, mice actually, the Mad Cat's rat mice. It's probably one of the most adjustable peripherals I've ever seen. It's adjustable but limited in that it is right hand only. There is a groove right here for your right hand's thumb. You can't switch that to the other side if you're a lefty, I'm afraid. The other joystick we're going to look at, however, is ambidextrous, but not this one. Let's look at some of the stuff you can adjust on this because it's pretty bonkers. What you get in here, hopefully you can see that on the camera, is a little adjuster. It's basically an Allen key. Let me see if I can pop it out there. Now there are various points on this stick that you can insert that into and adjust stuff. What you can adjust here, which is crazy cool, is actually the angle of the joystick, which doesn't sound that useful, but it really is. So what you do is you undo this, there's a little button here that you press, and then you can just tip the joystick, look. That's actually very useful. Not so much in that configuration, but some of you saw me use this on the live stream a little while ago to play Rise of Flight. And in Rise of Flight, the aircraft have no trim. So you cannot trim nose up or nose down. The aircraft naturally want to rise. So what I did with this joystick is actually this. Having it straight up like that, your hand naturally tends to lean forward. So having the joystick straight up means you're naturally putting some forward pressure on the stick when you just rest your hand on it, which is great. If you're flying a sim like Rise of Flight where you need to be nose down all the time, that having the adjustability on this, the rake, I guess, of the stick itself is very, very cool. And in general, you know, everybody's arms, everybody's wrists and hands are different. So that's one neat feature, one adjustable feature of this joystick, which I absolutely love, the ability to adjust that rake. Most people are going to have it probably about there. 
slightly leant forward. It's a more classic look, slightly angled forward. It's more natural for most people's hands. You can see there as I'm gripping it, I'm not bending my wrist in unnatural positions. It works really, really well. The next thing you can adjust is actually this. You see there's a gap here between the top of the joystick and the rest of the sleeve. Again, that's another adjustable feature. Simply unscrew this, and then we can press a button here and collapse that or extend it. So if you have very small hands or you're buying this for a child, see that's a little bit too small for me. The top of my hand is now grabbing the buttons, but you can adjust this for your size of hand. Again, nobody is, everybody is unique. So let me just pull this up again. There we go. So that's about as high as it goes. And there are three or four stages in between to all the way collapse. So there's an adjustable bit. The next thing you can adjust is actually up here, the head. You can actually angle the entire head backwards and forwards. There's a little nut in here. There's another one, I think. I can't remember where the other one is. It doesn't matter, it's the point that counts, but you can adjust the whole head backwards. So I've actually loosened this already. There you go. How cool is that? So what you could do is actually have the stick angled forward and then pull all these buttons back and you've got complete adjustability there. There's another button, I think it's this, this front one, this front nut here, that lets you slide the whole thing forwards and backwards as well as just angling it forwards and backwards. So tons of adjustability. Other than the adjustability though, let's look at the features of this. As I mentioned previously, this is one of the few kind of mid-level, high entry level joysticks that actually has two throttles on it. They're both here. And you can see, they're pretty solid. I mean, they're not um, Thrustmaster Warthog style difficult to move. They're just really, really nice. They, they feel, in, in terms of the, the, the motion here, it feels very silky, very smooth. You do need a bit of pressure to get them moving. It's, it's pretty cool. And the reason that th that is so cool is if you're flying something like an Airbus, then the position of the throttles here actually dictates the auto throttle mode or the auto thrust mode in the aircraft. The last thing you want is on, on, a, on any joystick that has a built-in throttle is the ability just to just tap it and it moves. Because on an aircraft like the Airbus, that would actually screw up your auto throttle settings. This doesn't. You need to put a fair bit of pressure on this to move it. Now, if you're flying a single engine aircraft, all you need to do is put these two throttles together, squeeze the buttons and it locks. Now it's one throttle which is great. Next thing most joysticks have in this range is a twist for your rudder. This also has that. You can see it's not dramatic. It doesn't go a full 90 degrees, which is great. Again, the last thing you want, last thing I want with my problem wrist is turning my whole wrist completely 90 degrees. That's painful. This has just the right amount. There's a good amount of spring in there as well. So you know when you're turning it, you're not gonna be accidentally feeding in rudder when you don't really want to, which is great. I like that a great deal. On the front of the joystick, three buttons on the front, single stage trigger here, two buttons down the front here. Now these are actually pretty great. I use these for my track IR. When I'm flying with um, any sim that I'm using track IR in, I will set one of these up as reset center and the other one up as pause track IR. Works like a charm. In addition, going back to rise of flight, some aircraft in rise of flight don't actually have a throttle. What they have is a blip switch. So the engine runs at full power and then you need to, in the cockpit, hit the blip switch, usually on top of the joystick, which will basically cut off fuel to the engine and that's how you control your speed. I tend to set one of these for that. So your hand and is kind of naturally in this position while you're flying, you can hit that blip switch very, very easily to cut the engine out if you're flying a very simple aircraft. On the side here, we have one, two, three, four buttons down here that you can program up however you see fit, either using the in-game bindings in FSX or X-Plane or Rise of Flight or whatever you are flying or World of Warplanes. And in addition to those four, we have no less than one, two, three, four buttons here, an eight-way hat, this is a proper eight-way hat. Each position clicks as you move that around. And look at this. There is a scroll wheel where down is a button and up is a button. And you can keep rolling. Obviously, that works great for flaps. You set this button, one roll down as extend flaps a little bit. And you can just go click, 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 click and roll through your flaps. And then do the reverse to bring them back up, which is fabulous. There is another button here, incidentally, which is the classic Cytex slash Madcats shift button. So in total, we have four here. Plus two makes six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Trigger makes eleven. Plus these eight on the hat, making seventeen. Uh, yeah, sorry, nineteen buttons in there, and then two here, so twenty-one buttons. The shift button changes the programmability of everything on the stick. So you've gone from twenty-one buttons now all the way up to forty-two programmable buttons on this dinky little joystick. That's amazing. Huge programmability. 
Okay, so I think one of the probably most decisive tests for how precise a joystick is is actually flying a helicopter. So what I've done here is I've chosen the most difficult helicopter I know, which is the Huey, Huey H1 in DCS World. This is a crazy helicopter that I'm actually not very good at flying myself. But I thought we would use this as a test for the joystick to show you how precise this can be. So I've currently got my control set up. I can zoom in, zoom out. You need to be able to zoom quite well in a helicopter because you need good peripheral vision. The two buttons on the front of the stick here, in front of the, uh, now it's the uh, collective, but normally the throttles, the right hand one is for centering track IR, the left hand one is my uh, stick trim. So what we're going to do is we're going to try and get this into uh, takeoff and something of a hover. So gently increasing, see how delicate that is on the throttles there, collective. Increasing the collective, see what the helicopter does. How nice is that? So just putting in very, very tiny movements, a little bit of right rudder there, and gently coming off the right rudder, now gently pushing the stick forwards, trying to hold a stable hover. Let's give it some power now and take off and go do some flying. Let's see how well we can control this. Now the Huey is a bit of a bear to fly. It, it does suffer from retreating with the, it does suffer from settling with power quite easily or, or a vortex ring effect, vortex state. So you do need to be quite um, active in how you're controlling it and most of the control inputs that you need to feed in need to be very very subtle or you end up with that oscillating effect. So I'm just going to trim the stick here. There we are, all trimmed up. I can just fly with the collective now. Trying to do a hard turn over the airport there. So banking right, twisting. Getting pretty low to the ground. As we roll level, releasing that right twist. Dropping the collective down, we ballooned up a little bit there. See there's an aircraft taxiing, let's see if we can get a little bit closer to him. So for an entry level stick, to be able to handle the precision that's required to fly something as complicated as a Huey, complicated in terms of its flight model, is actually going some. Now there is a bit of a dead zone on the twist. If you look at my uh, pedals down the bottom there, let's put it in the climb. You see if I twist it, the pedals don't actually move. I need to give it a little bit more twist for those pedals to move. Which is exactly what you want. I've seen a lot of people complain about that, the dead zone on a Cytex stick. It's actually a good thing. The last thing you want is to be just banking the stick there and feeding in anti-torque pedals by accident. Lots of fine adjustments now on the collective. Trying to hold us fairly level in this turn. Let's see if we can actually get a level turn. And the reason a helicopter, other than it being so complicated to fly and so intricate to fly, the other reason a helicopter is a good test for a joystick is that any one input, so be it collective or pitch or yaw or roll, any one input needs to be countered with the others. So if I roll this to the right, I need to be adjusting my pitch, I need to be adjusting my collective as well, I need to be feeding in those anti torque pedals as well to compensate for what I just did. All three forces need to be working in harmony. This joystick uses hall sensors as well, so it is very accurate, which is precisely what you want. Now having those two front buttons right by the uh, throttles here is actually very, very, very convenient. I can just recenter my viewer track IR, 
very easily without taking my hands off the controls. And I can trim the aircraft very, very quickly without having to stretch fingers all over the place. It's actually very convenient. The correct place for the trimmer is actually on the joystick. It's actually about there. But I find it actually more convenient to have it where I've got it. Alright, so here we are now back in FSX in A2A's phenomenal C172 trainer. Let me show you how I've got all this set up. I have the buttons on the side here for my easy dock views. So I can jump around the aircraft or so. I have all the controls set up exactly as you would expect. So twist is going to put in left rudder there. And right rudder. Obviously that's my elevators. There's my ailerons. They're all working just fine. Everything's great there. I have trim set up here on the on the uh, hat here. So pulling down will be trim up. Pushing up will be trim down. In addition though, let me see if I can change the view to behind the wing. I have the wheel here set up for increase and decrease my flaps. All I have to do is just roll that down. Just drops my flaps down one notch, two notches, three notches. Very, very convenient. And just roll it as I just did to retract the flaps all the way. Very easy to set up. I have my Easy Dock. I'm actually not using uh, Track IR, but if I were, Easy Dock uh, Track IR recenter is on the front. That's all there is to it. Of the two levers here, I've separated them now. You can see they're very separate. Left one is the throttle right one is the mixture which is pretty much all you need in a little Cessna so our lights are on we've done our pre-flight checks we're good to go so let's get going brakes off just finger trip control now on that stick doesn't slide around the desk very easy to manage now I showed in a previous video with the A2A 172 but it's one of the few aircraft in FSX that actually spins accurately, but you do need a good set of controls in order to recover the spin and also to put it in the spin. So let's see how we do with this. So mixture rich, props, power full, and those up. Now as the stall comes on, we keep on pulling back. We're gonna spin left. Here comes the stall now. So left and pulling back. All right, now to recover. Power off, nose forward, counter the spin. No drama at all. Now here's something I actually have a hard time doing with a yoke. A steep turn, so 60 degrees of bank, trying to keep the ball centered. Just pulling back on the stick gently now, easing up on that twist to get us on a level steep turn. I actually have a very hard time doing this with a yoke. I'm still not very precise, but I'm a lot better actually with this joystick than I am with my yoke. Go figure that. So there we go, you've seen the software, we've shown you the joystick. This again is the Mad Cats Fly 5 or Cyborg Fly 5. Now, I tend to use very, very high-end equipment and this is not a high-end piece of gear. This is a $60 joystick and I was actually very, 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 very surprised at how much I like this. As I mentioned earlier in the video, I used this on a live stream flying Rise of Flight last week. I would not use anything on a live stream that I'm not somewhat confident on or very confident in and I was confident enough in this joystick to use it for that live stream. This is actually a really good mid-level joystick. The programmability on this 
Some people don't like the Cytex software. I don't mind it at all. I tend to do most of my bindings within the SIM anyway, so it doesn't really matter. But the software is actually fine once you get used to it. I love the fact that this has these two throttle levers. That, for me, turns this into a serious piece of kit that I can use to fly an Airbus or a 737 or a Baron or a complex aircraft. Having two independent throttle controls is very important to me. The twist on the rudder, I never use a twisty rudder. I use rudder pedals, but I always find if I have a joystick that does twist, I kind of naturally want to twist it. This one works great. There's a lot of, not a lot, but there's a good amount of feedback in that spring to tell you when you're twisting it. A lot of the cheaper joysticks, you don't get that, and you'll be accidentally feeding in rudder when you really don't want to, which is a pain if you're taxiing. You end up slaloming down the taxiway instead of going in a straight line. I like the feel on this as well. It's kind of a rubberized feel. It feels expensive. It feels more expensive than it is, to be honest with you. I like that. And more than anything else, there is enough programmability and enough axes on this that I really could use this as my daily flyer, and I've started to. Sometimes I just want to go for a quick fly, and I don't want to drag out the yoke and screw the yoke to the desk and attach the two throttle quadrants and pr plug everything in and make sure it's all working and bleh. It's a pain. If I just have a few minutes and I want to quickly fly something or just try something out, or maybe a publisher sent me something and I want to take a quick look at it, this is my go-to joystick right now. It's perfect. One cable, one USB connection. I have all those controls. Everything feels great. It's completely customizable, so it fits my arthritic hands, which is perfect. I like this joystick. Now, I mentioned at the start, some people, I saw from the comments, some people have had issues with Cytex reliability. I would challenge those people that I can give you as many comments showing issues with Thrustmaster or CH products or any other joystick manufacturer out there. The fact is, as I said, I've got a house full of Cytex gear that I bought. This was provided to me for free in order to review it. Got to point that out. But I do have a house full of Cytex products because I love the products and I have never, ever, ever had a reliability issue with a Cytex product. It's all, I think, very much down to how you treat them. That's much as my opinion. Anyway, thank you for watching. As always, my name is Frugal. See you soon.